Yo, what's happening guys? It's GM Cody and welcome to this new series that I'm going to be starting while well, I'm going to be talking about the chronological history of hobby games. Now, when I say hobby games, that means anything from, you know, role-playing games, war games, miniatures, and even card games. Generally, any game that is outside the realm of Scrabble, uh, Monopoly, etc. And you have to devote a little bit more than a casual amount of free time to. Now, I've talked about my origins in gaming, and you can go back and uh, watch my video on my gaming origin story. But briefly, I started playing all these games around 30 years ago. Uh, my friend brought a Citadel miniatures catalog to school and introduced me to the idea of all these games. And from there, I became obsessed and interested in all these types of games from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Warhammer, Battletech, and yeah, even Magic the Gathering back then, even though I don't play it anymore, and everything in between. Uh, I've never called myself a role player or a war gamer or a board gamer. I'm a gamer, and I love games, and I love the history of games, and the history of anything, really. So, in this series, I'm going to be take, uh, taking a deep dive into the history of all these hobby-type games that I love. We'll be talking in broad strokes and micro strokes, taking a look at the general uh, history of specific games, game designers, companies, or anything I find interesting. Uh, I plan on start uh, sticking to a chronology, but I might occasionally jump a little forward and behind the story. So, where to begin? So, to talk about hobby games, we have to start with the granddaddy of them all, the war game. Don't worry, if you're not in war games, don't tune out just yet, because wargaming is really where you can draw all the lines back to, and don't worry, we'll be talking about your favorite games and game types in the future, and I promise you, you might find this interesting and worth your time. So, the origins of war games, as we know them today, really started in Prussia, but you could say the first war game was chess, a game which is believed to be around 1500 years old and first came into being in India. Uh, eventually, it made its way into Persia, then eventually to Spain and to Europe. And of course, there were other variants of chess that made its way into China and Japan and probably inspired by the Indian variation. But the first real war game, let's jump ahead to 1780. A military professor named Johann Christian Ludwig Helwig is credited with creating what is probably the first real war game as we know it today. The game was dubbed Kriegsbill, which actually just literally translates to war game. It was sort of based on the concepts of chess. It played very much like chess. It had different pieces that represented different military units and were moved around on a giant uh, gridded map, uh, much like chess. Uh, you know, pieces would take other pieces. Helwig's initial idea was the game would be used to train young military officers, but he also thought it could make a very fun recreational game. And though it was uh, a commercial success, the Prussian military did not take the game too seriously as they considered it too simplistic and unrealistic to teach proper military tactics and doctrine. Now, fast forward a little bit, other game inventors came along and modified Helwig's chess-like war game, improving, modifying the design. And see, even back in the 19th century, gamers were tweaking the rules and creating house rules. <laughs> but a revolution came in 1824 when a Prussian officer named George Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reiswitz, that is a mouthful, created a whole new type of Kriegspiel. Reiswitz and his father co-created a game very different from the chess-based games of Helwig. This game was specifically aimed at the military, and it was played on actual maps with lead blocks representing all the different military t unit types, usually painted red and blue, which also started the whole blue four, red four thing, which the military still uses today in war games and uh, you know simulations and such. The game aimed to be re as realistic as possible. The pieces and maps were all supposed to be in scale to one another. There were charts to determine how far units could move, what the respective combat capabilities would be. All this data was compiled from actual combat data from the previous Napoleonic Wars. And the game also used dice and records that were kept to record exhaustion and casualties. But one of the biggest revolutions was the idea that there needed to be a referee or umpire to conduct the games. The umpire kept tabs on the orders being issued to the fictional units on the maps, and the umpire would also determine how those units would react and move. Also, the umpire would roll the dice to determine casualties. The umpire would reach far ahead into our modern world of games and prove most important to the development of a whole new genre of games, which you can probably guess what that is, but we're going to save that for a later video. 
Now, the Prussian military was thoroughly impressed by Ryswitz's game, and by the end of the 1820s, every regiment in the Prussian army was equipped with this new war game to teach tactics and doctrine to their officer corps. But the rest of the world did not take wargaming seriously as a training tool until war broke out in 1870 between France and Prussia. This conflict, known as the Franco-Prussian War, saw Prussia roll over the French in a stunning series of victories, and in a scant six months or so, give or take, saw France declare defeat. I'm not going to go into all the details of the Franco-Prussian War. Um, there's many fascinating and good books about that conflict. It's actually a really interesting one and one that gets overlooked a lot. Also, you can find a lot of great videos uh, here on YouTube. Uh, you know, if you're interested in that, go look it up. But needless to say, after the Franco-Prussian War, the other nations of the world took notice. And, uh, you know, so the Prussians had many good things going for them. But one of the things that definitely was a factor was their training, not just of their troops, but also of their officers. And this was accredited to many things, but one of the things was Kriegspiel, the war game. So civilians and those in the military around Europe took keen interest in this new war game. And in 1876, the British military translated Kriegspiel to English as a training tool. Also in 1876, Spencer Wilkinson founded the Oxford Kriegspiel Club, credited as the first civilian war games club. Now, Wilkinson discovered the game while visiting Germany in 1874, and he took the game back to England with the help of a fellow student started playing games. He gathered together others that took an interest in the game, professors, students, theologians, and others. They were all playing war games for fun and started adopting the game for other historical battles in the past. The club published their games in the Oxford Magazine. They also played games with other clubs that started to spark up. Uh, Wilkinson would go on to become Oxford's first professor of military history, and the Oxford Creeksville Club would continue to play well into 1914. Now, the next big breakthrough in hobby gaming appeared in 1913 when well-known science fiction writer H.D. Wells penned a new set of rules for playing with toy soldiers. He called his little game Little Wars. The game was meant to be played on the floor or in a garden. Uh, artillery used spring-loaded cannons firing wooden dowels. Infantry and cavalry attacks were based on the size of the unit, and they would eliminate other models based on how big or small they were relative to each other. And movement was determined by a two-foot piece of string. Uh, Wells played with his friends and, of course, published the rule set. Uh, Wells was also the first gamer to use model terrains such as houses, trees, hills, etc., now, Wells' game did not have a huge impact upon its release, but later on it would have a large influence on the hobby, and one could say he created the first miniatures war game. Now, when the Great War broke out in 1914, the already niche hobby of war gaming become, became even more obscure. A few clubs made up of a handful of people hung around playing Kriegspiel or other variants of Little Wars, but mostly people seemed to become disillusioned with the idea of playing war. And also, toy soldiers became even more scarce during the Second World War thanks to the shortage of tin and lead and things like that. And after the wars, most military hobbyists turned more towards painting and modeling with toy soldiers over playing games with them. Next time on the History of Hobby Games, we're going to be look, going in further into the future, into the 1950s, and uh, talking about a new revolution in hobby gaming and a man in California named Jack Scrooby would revolutionize the hobby, and another man in England named Donald Featherstone would further revolutionize it. And these men would go on to influence others, such as, uh, you know, Games Workshop, and, um, of course, Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this short little history tidbit about the history of hobby gaming. Let me know if you liked the video. You know, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is about the length of what I'm going to keep these videos, just short and sweet. And if you want me to go into further details about a specific person or a specific game or whatnot, just let me know. And I hope to be doing this maybe once a week or every other week. just depends how fast I can get them out. Anyways, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time.